So I was wasting some time on Instagram the other day when I came across a reel of a couple of Amish lasses in a cafe. Now, take a listen. How do they refer to Americans in this video? Yes, I would Hi. just like to know what the English girls our age would order to eat. The English girls. Are you from right. England? We're Amish girls, oh, so... Yeah. Okay, I got you. English girls would have something like avocado toast or kombucha or cold-pressed juice or matcha lattes. As you can tell from the lady's reaction in the video, these Amish girls are not actually asking about English girls as we would mean the word English, but rather it refers to the Americans or more particularly, the non-Amish girls themselves. So why is that the case? Why do they refer to non-Amish people as English? I thought this was quite interesting, so I've turned it into a video. Now today there's around 380,000 Amish people. Most of them live in the United States and in Canada. They're particularly known for their way of life, which to various degrees rejects modern agricultural and other technology and seeks to live more like people in the 18 or 1700s did, as well as of course being particularly religious as Anabaptists or very strict Protestants closely related to Mennonites. Around 300,000 of those Amish people speak Pennsylvania Dutch, which despite the name is not actually a form of Dutch, but rather a form of German. In this video, I've explained why this is actually the case, why this word Dutch was sometimes historically used to refer to people from Germany, even though Germans call themselves Deutsch. There's a bit more about that in this video as well. As I mentioned, they're closely related to the Mennonites. So there is a slight Dutch angle if we twist this a little bit. Of course, the word Mennonite comes from the founding Mennonite, which was a Catholic priest turned reformer called Minna Siemens, who was actually Frisian, but from the part in the Netherlands today. So apart from that very slight connection because the Amish actually broke away from or rather the Mennonites broke away from the Amish community already in the later 17th century, most of the Amish ancestors came from southern Germany, Switzerland and Austria, which of course at that time was a regional concept rather than a national one because this was split between many different states and principalities and other uh, forms of polity at that time before they came to America. Now the reason they're called Amish is because in 1693 the founder of their particular way of thinking, a man called Jakob Amman, gave his name to the Amish. And it was in the 18th century that most of the ancestors of the modern day Amish would emigrate from places in southern Germany, Austria and Switzerland to the United States and Canada. Now most of them would actually go to Pennsylvania. The reason being that this state had been founded by those being religiously persecuted and they had quite lax laws for religious toleration, which was the opposite of what was true in Europe at the time. So many of the Amish ended up in Pennsylvania, which of course is why the language that they started to speak became known as Pennsylvania Dutch. Now the Dutch had actually been in charge of that area, but by the 1700s they were no longer around New Amsterdam that had become New York and so the main language being spoken in the area was being spoken by British people so English was the main language for the communities that were already settled in the 1700s in Pennsylvania and so it makes sense that the Amish referred to these people as English as a lot of the time still to this day people from Great Britain are referred to as English even if they're Scottish or Welsh but it does appear that the majority of people there were indeed from England and spoke English. However, of course, the political situation changed at the end of the 18th century when the Americans got their independence. And of course, they no longer refer to themselves as English, but rather as American. However, it appears that the Amish continued to refer to their neighbors who were not part of the same communities as being English, despite the fact that politically they would now identify as American. This is partially because the word English, which had specifically before referred to people from England, came to mean something else within these rather insular Amish communities. And this was that because people outside of the community were English speaking and Englishmen, therefore the idea was that anyone who was outside of the community was English because generally they didn't travel around a lot. They certainly weren't fans of modern ways of traveling when they came around. And so the word English simply came to mean foreigner, someone who is not uh, one of us, someone who does not follow our way of life. It's interesting to note that in Pennsylvania Dutch, the Amish refer to themselves as Deitsche, 
which you'll probably recognize is related to the German word Deutsche and indeed the word Dutch as well. So this is their name for themselves. However, it's interesting to note that they do have a separate term for other people who speak German, which is different to English. So there is some recognition that linguistically they are connected. And that is while they refer to themselves as Deutsche, they refer to other Germans or people who speak German as Deutschlerner. So that would be like having the difference between German and Germanlander in English. So there is a clear connection there. So that's rather interesting. However, for them, all non-German speakers are simply simply Englisher, so English. And that is what we see. Now I'm reliably informed that in Geoga County, which I believe is the pronunciation, don't ask me why, Ohio, there is also a different term that is used by the Amish community there for outsiders, and that is Yankee. Now, of course, Yankee is an interesting word. It today can mean something like any American can be a Yankee or particularly someone from the northern United States. And interestingly enough, this has a Dutch etymology, which comes from Jan Kees, which is quite a uh, familiar, uh, familiar name of, of someone, which probably refers back to New Amsterdam and people being called similar names around that area, giving birth to the name Yankee. Although it should be said that many who speak Pennsylvania Dutch also speak English, and so some terms may be more favoured within English. So I believe Yankee is, is used a lot more in English, while in Pennsylvania Dutch they might be using the term Englisher to refer to people. But as we saw in the clip, they also refer to outsiders as, as English when speaking English too. All right, everyone, thank you very much for watching this video. It's been a really random subject, but as I said, I was watching... Uh, this reel on Instagram and I heard it and I thought it was interesting and wondered what the historical context was for uh, the re for why they are referring to outsiders as being English. Um, and this is what I could find out about it in uh, my little search that I did. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I, um, I don't really plan to make any other videos about Amish, maybe something about Pennsylvania Dutch, if people find that interesting and why it's called Pennsylvania Dutch. I'm considering doing some more videos about different nationalities in the American Civil War as well. So as you can see in the top left, I did one about the Dutch in the Civil War and I've done one about the Irish. But actually the biggest group of foreigners that fought were the Germans. So that might be an interesting connection again to today's video. So let me know in the comments below, would you like to see that? Uh, and uh, I hope you are all doing very well and I will see you in the next video. So until then, I have been Hilbert, I have been the Englishman and uh, <laughs> I'll see you later.